Man, isn't it? The saying is, it's the three months before the three months that are important in the sense of, it's the training camp that you do before you actually get into training camp. I remember what I was when I first came back for the Klitschko camp. It was the first time I've had a time out of the gym because all my fights from amateurs to pros have been back to back. So I thought the best thing for me to do is stay away from the gym. So I knew it was going to be a gruelling 12 week camp. So I started eating a lot and I thought if I put on the weight, when I get back into camp, I'll shred it. But when I got back into camp and I started hitting the heavy bag, I started sparring, I started doing my conditioning. It was just like, I didn't shred up. I just kind of filled out into the body that I created on holiday. And I come back weighing about 120 kilograms. And I'm normally fighting at around 114 kilograms. So it was crazy, but I feel a lot better around if I look at how I was in the Klitschko camp to now, around the same time, I'm, I'm a lot lighter and a lot more nimble, so. But to step on the scales. See what I'm saying? See that, 113. Crazy. I made that mistake, as I said to you earlier, of not training when I had the break between the Molina fight and the preparation to the Klitschko fight. So what was good about this camp is that I made sure that I stayed relaxed, I was ticking over, I was doing my boxing. So when I got into training, you know, my body was already, let's say, warmed up and limbered up for the hard work. Josh has got to be in shape and looking at him now and looking at what he weighs, he's well on track. Yeah. Siege, when they hear the sound of the drum, They'll be saying, oh Lord, here they come. Yeah, here we come. Hey, here we come. Hey, here we come. Here we There is no hard part about being a professional boxer. It's a blessing. And if I wasn't a professional boxer, it'd be a blessing as well. But as I said, wealth comes in character. It's not about status. There's no big difference to, to what I do that determines who I am. It's just boxing is a blessing because I do it for passion, not for occupation. Do you know what it is on that ring walk? There's no turning back. There's no turning. If I, was that, if I was that nervous, I think I wouldn't, I would dodge a fight. I wouldn't bother training and like, you know, like for like three months, it, it'll be on my mind and stuff. If I was that nervous, I probably just wouldn't do it. So yeah, on the walkout, it's like, it is what it is now. No turning back. <laughs> I think the support I have is real. I don't call them fans, I call them supporters because they're like they're loyal, they ride with me because we have that personal touch. Lord, give me an angel, yeah. Someone who's faithful, yeah. This world is so hateful, you run into my mind and I really can't take you. James Harden at the garden when I'm going off. You see the gold around my neck, I'm just showing off. You looking at the best, baby, I ain't going to stop. Reach your foot, reach your foot, reach your foot, a mountain top. Ain't nothing going to stop me now. It's interesting with this fight stuff because even though the fight with Takam is the most important thing in the world, there's other things in your personal life that are still happening. So it was my cousin, my closest friend, it was his birthday, MJ's birthday, and uh, after the public workout, we got back to the fight house and um, we all planned it. We got a cake and we all have dinner together around the table. And on his birthday, obviously, it's just funny because a year older, a year wiser, and for him, a year uglier. <laughs>
Like, the thing is, like I said, we can, we can all fall out, we can all have a difference of opinion. I'm not going to no one. We can move away from each other, but we always come back. And whatever this is that's, that's here, it's been here now for a good little while, and long may it fucking continue. It's just a pleasure to be a part of it. Speeding down 9-5, fresh up on my 9 5 About to hit the block and shine, really all it took was time Yo, question, What's it like gearing up for like a fight of this nature? What's it, what's it like gearing up? Do you know what's good about the gym is um, I'm around good people I'm around real good people that make it easy And one thing I've learned, right, I've been doing it 10 years now And I'm still here smiling Even through the tough, 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 tough times Tough times where I think You know when you can't be bothered to go to work or I can't be bothered to go to the gym, I've yeah. done it and it hasn't knocked me back. I've still been able to move forward. So I've got that experience now to know how to get through and how to keep on going. And time goes quick. 10 years, as I said, and I know another 10 years is going to go like that. So I might as well grip through and grind through these type of days that I've done for Listen, hey, much, yeah. much love. Much Thank appreciate you, brother, man. It's always, always a pleasure, yeah. man. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. Take it. Awesome. Yeah, but I need to. You can do chest on just he's, he's moving really well through his back but this area of his back is really key to get the rotational movement so just making sure he's nice and loose in there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my let me try. No, no, no. No, wait, wait, wait. I want to put my back soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just about the lift, really. Yes! Oh, oh mate, that's enough. I'm done, done, I'm done. <laughs> that's what you baffled. That was pro. That was good. Oh! 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 That's it. Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. That was deep. He said five years from now, I'll be, I'll be doing my own pizza. Rock, rock. I said, you're the fucking man. Any chance of a sneaky follow back? <laughs> yeah, go on, look. You know we ain't going to do it, though. You won't follow back, 100%. Yeah, no chance. You're zero, don't follow anyone. Zero. Oh, is it? Nothing. <laughs> that public tweet was funny, and I just said, listen, give me a follow back, bro. Because he don't follow no one. But it was just like tongue in cheek, you know, bit of banter. And, uh, but I still didn't get the follow back, but it's all love. <laughs> it's all love. So shout out to the Gallagher brothers. Right, so I need a tune, G. Of course. Walk into my, yeah. So when it comes to like picking your ring walk music, you've got so many different aspects. And that's sometimes why it takes so long. And even two days before, the engineer is still asking me for my music. <laughs> Do you want to know the one? All right, this is it then. This is what we're coming up with. Yeah, what? Let's go, let's see. This is nah. Skins' fault. I was after a really good. Nah. This is the tune. Though. All right, play the two tunes. Fred. Do you know this song? Well, I reckon we, I reckon we like it. My philosophy is win, 
I come back to the gym, I get on my grind, I try and improve. I've taken losses before as an amateur, and I come back to the gym, I try to improve, that got me here today. So there's nothing wrong in losing, there's something wrong in getting disheartened, and I'll never get disheartened. So for me, why I like to feel comfortable is because I already know whatever happens, I'm gonna come back to the gym in a few days and get back on my grind. And if I didn't wanna be here, no one's forcing me. Let me just enjoy what I'm doing and have fun with it. What about your mindset? You've got those belts, but have you still got that underdog challenger mentality? 100%. Hashtag stay hungry. <laughs> it's true. I'm hungry still forever and forever. That's just the way of life, right? It's not just in boxing. People out in, in jobs or whatever they're doing, everyone's hungry to succeed in whatever they're doing. And can we get a big cheer for Eddie Hearn, please? <laughs> Squeezing, but it was getting tighter as the time went on. <laughs> and he was still looking. I seen that, that mad grip. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> you just see that they're confident and they, they're at the point of no return. Some people you don't get anything, which is also dangerous, but some people, you know, they're chewing, they're chewing gum, they're looking, breathing. You can read that this person wants to. Wants to fight. On the Friday, the day before the fight, just to keep my body active and ticking over so it doesn't go completely lethargic and shuts down, I have a little um, warm up. Those pad sessions before I fight kind of give me a gauge of how I'll be feeling for um, my fight the next day. The key to some success sometimes is starving the distractions and focusing on what's important for the time. I found something that I want to do and I don't let anything get in the way of it really. I have a lot of temptations. I have a lot of distractions, but starving those distractions and temptations is what fed the hunger for the sport. Sophie's here. <laughs> the green and white. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah? Tactical. Thank you very much, so, so just see always a pleasure. All day. So, no, like, on my head. It's not far, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though the opponent changed, it's, it's not ideal. But it is what it is. You got to expect the unexpected and that keeps you on your toes. I'm fighting Takam now. And that's it, do you know what I mean? I can't be like, oh, I'm fighting Takam, I wish I was fighting Pula, but it's, it's not how life goes. Let's roll with the punches, keep it moving, and crack on. I just hope I wake up feeling good, feeling refreshed. Um, and, and it's just like, it's just all about feeling before the fight. You've done all the work, so it's not like, oh, I can do a little run before the fight and feel good, or 10 rounds on the pads. It's not about anything physical, it's just feeling. How do you feel? So I just hope I wake up feeling fresh. For everyone, fight day is different. Some people can do whatever they want, but for me, it's another day, really. Oh, oh hey! You can quit as well. You hear in the back here? Oh my god. Yes! Oh, you did. Better than me. All right, come. Me and MJ go pound for pound quick. Come. <laughs> come. Pound for pound, you first. He's like, oh, right. play. We're the fucking hey, Don Lot. <laughs> MJ just hit the fuck. <laughs> You always do a team walk, find a nice park and just stroll, fresh air, 
you know, providing that the weather's good, we're going a nice draw and just... Do you know what, as I said with my team, it's not like we're all like walking in a military formation. Everyone's just cracking jokes. It's like a normal day, you know, all familiar faces. All my life I've been working for the money. All my life I've been chasing after honey. All my life you could never take it from me. Got the confidence of every motherfucker who said fuck me. Fuck you. Go figging out a boy. What's the bonus? I want that don't go to school. <laughs> What's that called? Tea. No. No, the nice bit of this. It's called a tea in it, bro. Tea box. Exactly. What is it? Charlie. He's going to say green. No, what? Oh. That's, they teed off from there But they teed off from there. Yeah, but this is the longer one. <laughs> Freddy, the let's keep it going. <laughs> I'll teach you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not the most confident person, I put you in a situation that I build you up, I add fuel to your front end. Be confident, be explosive, be egotistic, be arrogant. That's how you start feeling when you're warming up. So yeah, you can't hold it back. And that's what you feel like before a fight, man. You're untouchable. Joshua puts his perfect 19 fight, 19 knockout record and his IBF, WBA and IBO belts on the line. As much as I want to win, I would like them to leave the, the ring healthy and myself. So I put in a little prayer sometimes for myself and my opponent and it's time to get down to business. And that's it, the bell goes, the rest steps apart and tells us to engage. Because he's a shorter opponent, and I said, you know, he's probably going to go 10, 12 rounds, and I thought, all right, cool, I'm going to fight him on the inside. I just let him in a bit too close. And where he's shorter, he's kind of come in on crouched feet, as you do, because you come in lower. Then as he's stood up, he's kind of come bang like that, and just headbutted me right in my nose. And it had all the symptoms of a break, but it just cracked. It was hard to breathe through my nose, so I just breathe it through my mouth throughout the fight. But these things happen in boxing. I can't say, ref, give me, give me 10 minutes, mate. Let me sort myself out. Wipe the blood and crack on. The Takam had a hard head, very tough guy, and even though he wasn't stunned or hurt for a minute, he would be stunned for like two seconds and then recover. So I even saw to the point where both of his eyelids were ripped open, they were cut, there were deep gashes from the continuous punches. But he stayed in there and credit to him. When you're at championship level, that's what I think people are going to do. They're going to come 20% better than they have before just because they know that this is their chance to get that golden ticket to the heavyweight championship this is only up the stock of what he's worth now you know it's a brilliant performance by him and he's shown against all odds that he's still here and here's the bell for round 10 nine minutes to go no punch in his arsenal so don't be surprised if we see the other again the big thick legs of carlos tackle did a dance but he stays out He's not going to want to see too much sustained punishment because Takam's not going to win this. Anthony Joshua now retains his world heavyweight title. The ref done his job, he stopped in the 10th. I just think that there was nothing coming back my way. I was giving out a lot and his eyes were really like um, 
flaring up, there was blood, there was they were gashed. And you know the saying, live to fight another day. <laughs> After the fight, it's mad, like, because I'm full of adrenaline, it's hard for me to go straight to sleep. So sometimes I stay up till 6 a.m. and we're just laughing and joking, man. <laughs> and it's just a good crack. It's just a good crack because what was so important a few hours ago, i.e., the fight, is now like a distant memory and it's just back to normal living. And that's how quick the tables can turn. And I think that's how quick my career will go. That's why I just have fun with it because I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. I just want to have fun with it and enjoy the good times while they're rolling. Get ready to spin. Oh, and keep it going. Two right. 